Hey guys, I got a question from my buddy Greg Mitchell and uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while to kind of share the knowledge I've learned because I've learned from some good people and uh, he was asking me just about my Pro Tools setup so I just figured I'd pull up the um, uh, Pro Tools session. This is actually an old session of an old song but um, I, mean, I haven't sophisticated my my setup for this but Basically, these drums were recorded at my dad's studio, the salt mine, and uh, so, step one, <laughs> record at a world-class facility with killer vintage tube mics and a killer room with killer drums. Um, but I have to say, even then, I still, you know, obviously when I was coming up, I was getting crappy drum sounds for a long time. Um, so even with great gear, you can really still botch it and make it sound like crap. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, so this is, um, this session is probably, uh, I, mean, I just posted the drum video, so it's for that song, Fireside, but, um, so you can check out the song on my website or SoundCloud or whatever, but, uh, but basically I'll just play like the beginning, uh, little chorus thing. So, interesting thing with this, uh, thanks Will, I appreciate that homie. Uh, what up Dustin? Dirty D, Dungeon Productions, I see you brother, how are you? Um, <clears throat> so like I said, this is an older session, so I'm using a lot of the older plugins, uh, but they're tried and true, they're awesome. The REQs and the R compressors on the kick. But this is actually an interesting session because I started it at, thanks homie, I appreciate that, SoundCloud, check it out. Uh, my buddy Morgan Riley is singing uh, the lead vocals, I'm singing background, uh, my buddy Dustin Mentor's playing uh, guitar, and I want it good, good, good man. Uh, glad you're doing good homie, I see you doing good out there, proud of you man. Um, but... Um, and then uh, Stephen Douglas Young, I think Stephen Douglas Young, I'm pretty sure he played bass on this. Um, so yeah, but um, so yeah, so this is a, anyway, this is an interesting session because uh, I started it at the salt mine, my dad's studio. Um, so I had great front end analog mics and pre's and and everything and drums and cymbals so I mean number one you know they teach you in school which is true is it's all about the source if you don't have a good source you're not going to really get you're going to be limited by your by your uh, you know the output your your input is only exceeded by you can never exceed your output by your input right um, so so anyway so this session is interesting once again because we started there and I finished it here at home um, actually back in Arizona before I moved to LA and uh, so I had to, so there's actually two sessions there's a there's a drum bass and guitar session and then there's a whole nother session where I do like even more overdubs because so I had to basically truncate the drums bass guitars down to a final mix and then pull them in to a new session <laughs> Uh, which I don't recommend doing, but I just didn't have the CPU power to do everything I wanted to do and run all the plugins I wanted to do. So, you know, I bounced drums, bass, and guitar guitars down to one track, basically, or a stereo track. And so I'll, I'll pull up that other session right now so you guys can check it out. Um, and waiting, waiting. Vocal, yeah, there's vocals on it, Dustin. Um, go to my go to um, justinmsalter.com, and you can uh, hear Morgan Riley. He wrote the uh, lyrics and sang the lead vocals. He's got a really good voice, really good, uh, talented writer, singer, and um, and uh, <clears throat> I play, I sing the background harmony. And um, anyway, yeah, I I just I since I was just doing a drum video, I just figured I would kind of 
do drums and then pe if people want to check out the final they could uh, I put I popped a link on there but uh, let's see here so yeah so I'm just curious to see what I have on this yeah so nothing on the stereo track this is basically like I said um, <laughs> Drums, bass, and guitar is all on the stereo track, so I could do more overdubs. I did like this cool reverse thing. Um, these reverse things are cool. You have to play the chords backwards, and then when you rever when you do the reverse plug-in, which I'm sure you guys know about. For those that don't. It's in other and uh, all the way down the bottom reverse. And so when you play it backwards, it'll actually be the right, correct chord progression. So that's a little tricky. You have to record the chords backwards, and then when you hit reverse, it you know gives it that cool uh, kind of pulling effect that you hear. And then obviously I have a little EQ on here. I think I experimented with a few different things. Um, I cut a bunch of highs and a bunch of uh, high mids, just so it would basically just be what you're hearing, which is... Thanks, brother. I appreciate that, man. I, uh... Yeah, engineering's a tough gig. Um, you know, my dad always says engineers do things right and producers do the right thing. Producers do the right things. And I always, I always try to do both. Uh, and it's challenging because they're totally different brains of your, you know, left and right brains. So you're trying to be creative. Ultimately, the creativity is the most important thing because actually, this is a little bit of a tangent, but like, if you guys remember that Beck song, Loser, they recorded that, or, or even Alanis Morissette, they recorded those records to like crappy ADATs, and they're still, you know, the huge records of today. Um, let's see, what's your question, Dustin? When you hit the enter key and everything plays slow mode, have you ever found a way to record that or bust to record it? Hmm. Oh, like when you do halftime? Recording, I love halftime recording. If like a lead guitar player has a hard time uh, doing like a lead guitar part, we'll we'll do a we'll do a halftime recording. <laughs> I actually learned that from John Fields. Who they did. So anyway, yeah, I'll have to keep, I have to come back to you on that one. But uh, so let's see what we else we got going on. It's just a basic bunch of guitar overdubs in this session. But I'll go back to the old session. Um, oh yeah, the vocal chain. Okay, let's let's break it down real quick. So let's see. We got a little uh, Poltec. Looks like I'm boosting a little bit of hundred hertz, plus three on the hundred hertz. Give it some of that, um, you know, body and low end, and then I'm boosting some five K around 4 dB kind of a uh, moderate bandwidth and then um, cutting a little bit of 5k that's what's cool about these Poltex is you kind of simultaneously simultaneously cut and boost and so if you can see here I'm literally holding my iPhone so this is kind of tricky but I'm boosting 4k but, but I'm also cutting or attenuating so cutting a little bit 5k so let's hear the vocal just real fast my buddy morgan lead we're fleeting to freeze the tracks in their step and gazing deeply it's burning bright and it's whispering waving concentrating So it's just pretty subtle, like, I always compare mixing to cooking, like, the best mix engineers I've learned from, it's, I've learned over the years, it's all about subtle, subtlety, 
Um, so it's like cooking, you add a little spices, a little salt and pepper nut. You don't want to add too much salt and pepper to the um, stew, as they say. Um, so we got some CLA, all oh, the black face. I haven't used this in a while, but uh, let's see what this is doing. We're fleeting to oh, freeze. Crushing it pretty good. The tracks in their step and gazing deeply. It's burnt, burnt. So it's crushing it pretty good, you know, good on a rock vocal. Um, this is kind of the go to setting for the release, the slowest release basically. Um, and then the attack's pretty moderate. Yeah, these are cool. And then let's check out. Uh, Let's see the before and after of that actually. We're fleeting to freeze the tracks in their step and gazing deeply. It's burning bright and it's whispering, waving, concentrating there and flip. So yeah, pretty, pretty fat and louder. And then I got the Maserati. I love this thing. These things can kind of be tricky though. They can kind of fry it. Like there are a lot, it's a lot going on with these, but I love the high end on them. If you can, not obviously every singer sounds good, but, um, but yeah, like I like these Maseratis. They kind of have a sophisticated high end. I like to say, um, and it sounded really good on Morgan's voice. He had a very like warm, rich tone. See here, and then we've got so yeah, we're boosting the quite a bit of treble, a little bit of compression, and um, I always back off the input of these. Let's hear the before and after. We're fleeting to freeze the tracks in the stuff. Here's to hear the chorus. I will burn for you now. Yeah, it adds that nice little air on top. So, <laughs> uh, and the whole reason I'm making this video is for my buddy about drums. We'll get there in a second. But um, let's see here. And I'm singing back up. I just have a little bit of uh, EQ and compression on there. And okay, cool. And then we got a lot of going on the master. Some API. I like the mastering two setup, and then I kind of peel off the, uh, I kind of peel off the threshold a little bit so it's not totally crushing it. Um. So yeah, if you take that off, it's gonna be clipping pretty good. I got this SSL comp on there. doing a whole lot but adding a little tone to it I got another one on there just adding some volume no compression on that one and then the L316 this thing can be tricky but it's all about being very kind of judicious and light with it um, this is not one of my favorite mixes, but people seem to like it. It's kind of a rawer mix. It's an older mix, so I feel like I've done stuff that's cleaner since then. But I, I liked it a, a little bit being kind of raw uh, like it is, so you can kind of check it out. It's one of my rawer, kind of rougher mixes, but I kind of wanted to keep it that way to kind of keep the, the rawness of this one. Already nowadays, oh, me asking. Already nowadays, I would want to back off this threshold a little bit. I was crushing a little too hard, and basically, I just nowadays I'd be a little more light with the compression. I, I, I don't like it to be. I don't like to sound compressed, so it's. I'd probably pull it back like I just did, like a dB and a half. Um, we used. 
Um, for vocals, we used a groove tube. In fact, I have